Hello, Jez Cox here with very short highlights of the fourth and final stage of the ninth edition of the Arctic Race of Norway. Trondheim was the setting for both the start and finish of this stage as the riders worked their way in an anti-clockwise loop, going south, taking in a couple of classified climbs, but the focus always being about the return to Trondheim in Trundelag County for the big finale and the four closing laps which took in the brutally steep climb of the T-Holt Tower. The day started with Victor Le Fay, our race leader, in the Midnight Sun jersey, the leader's jersey of the Arctic Race of Norway. And it was the most difficult and attritious testing start to the stage we've had so far in this week of racing. Riders really struggling to get brakes to stick and stay clear. We had 10, 12 different iterations of various different brakes. And then this big one formed, led by Dylan Gronewegen of all people, uh, winner of stage two, of course, for Bike Exchange, Jayco. And we had a protest on the road, unfortunately. Initially, the riders, some of them choosing to bunny hop the protesters, but then the race being paused. It is unfortunately becoming increasingly more familiar, this site in world cycling. The breakaway set off as hard as they could to open back up the gap they had. It was timed, but then they were caught by the peloton. And then this fascinating little break just teased itself away. It was Fabian Crelier, the Frenchman of Total Energies, and Alessandro Veri of Archaea Samsic, who drove themselves clear. And they were joined by Andreas Lechnesen, the Norwegian for Team DSM. And then this happened. The peloton seemed to be comfortable to let it go. Confidence riders, including Victor Lafay, our race leader, just shutting down the road there and allowing the gap to go up. By this point, it was 1.49. Kofidis led a steady chase, but really just maintaining that tempo. But coming onto the closing circuits around Trondheim, this happened. Andreas Lechnesen noticed gaps opening up between himself, Grillier and Verre, and just slipped it into the big gear, did getting into time trial mode. He is, of course, European time trial champion, and time trialling away from the field was exactly what he did. At one point, he had well in excess of a minute of lead over the yellow jersey. Uh, containing our race leader, Victor Lafay, And then we had two big groups chasing Lafay by this stage, pretty isolated. He did have Axel Zongle in there in the group uh, just ahead of him, but Zongle was already starting to think about the finish and his only, his overall high finishing position as well. Lafay was isolated. He had uh, the likes of Quinten Herman was trying to jump ahead of him on general classification. And so Victor Lafay was left to battle things for himself. He was locked together, of course, with... Uh, Kevin Vulcolin, who'd climbed so well yesterday, those two locked together at both the top of the general classification and the young leaders' competition. However, this young man, the 23-year-old Norwegian, was enjoying an entirely partisan crowd who were absolutely loving seeing a Norwegian talent riding away from some of the best riders in the world. Nicola Conci did likewise, the Italian for Alpecin de Koenig, proving just what a strong team they have in this race. He also held and maintained the gaps that he made on the T-Holt Tower very well on the road. However, Andreas Lechnesen had extra power, given to him no doubt by the crowds who were absolutely loving what they saw in front of him. Behind Lafay's battle to keep that Midnight Sun jersey were fading, and he could see the gap was not coming down to Andrea Lechnesen anywhere near as much as it uh, needed to for him to keep it. However, it was still close come to finish. Lechnesen closed in on the drops, knowing he'd have to keep the pressure on, because chasing him was Nicola Conci, the Italian, already out of the saddle and starting his sprint at the end of the uh, finishing lap. Lechnesen got his arms in the air. He knew he'd won the stage. The question is, would he win the general classification of the Arctic race of Norway? He would have to wait and see. Nicolai Conci hugging the barriers and trying as best he can to race something of a sprint, whereas behind him, one of the best sprinters in the race, Axel Zongle, the Frenchman for Kofidis, again sprinting to a podium plinish. He'd won stage one, he'd worn the leader's jersey, and now he'd taken third on the final stage. A great four days of racing for him. The chasing group behind was led in by Quinten Hermans in the middle there in the yellow helmet, but they were spread wide across the road. On the back of that fanned out group was Victor Lafay, who stopped his clock on the line. This man, though, was already coming to the realization that he'd taken the third win of his pro career, and in fact the fourth on the same day, because he'd won the final stage of the Arctic race of Norway, and he'd only gone and won the race overall. The Norwegians had waited uh, eight years to get a Norwegian victor again. 
and it came in the shape of Andreas Lechnerson on the general classification. Tour Hushov won this race the first time it happened in 2013. And this man, Andreas Lechnerson, raised that brand new trophy for the Arctic Race of Norway, ahead of Hugo Hull of Canada and Nicola Conchi of Italy. Axel Zongler, our stage one winner, hanging on to take fourth in the general classification. And in doing so through his consistency, he also won the blue points jersey. The King of the Mountains jersey, my favorite jersey in world cycling, the Peacock jersey, was won by the American, Stephen Bassett of Human Powered Health, and he was delighted with that too. Brian Smith and I have really enjoyed bringing you coverage this week. Thank you so much for your company at the ninth edition of the Arctic Race of Norway. <laughs>